Hello my soccer universe to the review of the Serie A action on the past weekend. What a round that was again. Uh, all about top four and first things first. I'm wearing Milan, however the best team over this past week was definitely Inter. I just couldn't do it. Uh, especially looking ahead to the Euro Derby. I also will not talk much about Napoli. I gave them their due in their own separate video. Um, I just want to add, it was really nice of Fiorentina to make the guard of honor. The celebrations in this rather scrappy 1-0 win with an Ozyman penalty who missed the one before that. Uh, were something else. There was no title, li uh, no trophy lift yet, but there were quite some the celebrations and you can watch them all on YouTube. Uh, it's something special and I said it before. These celebrations uh, mean more to Napoli than probably in any other city in Italy for that matter. However, uh, it's the top four race that we have to talk about. The top four race that I already said last week could well be a top three race. Um, you know, if a team that is not in the top four wins the Champions League at the moment, this would be Milan when I said last. Um, uh, last time to time around, I said it is Inter and then Roma win the Europa League. I think both scenarios are unlikely, so we have to talk about top four. And then there's the little thing that we don't know yet if Juventus will uh, get points deducted or not. So, you know, a whole lot of things riding on, uh, on this. For now, let's assume the top four gets you in there. Six teams and all six teams uh, were playing each other on the past weekend with the Milan teams again deciding the matchups with the Roman teams like last week. Last week Milan dropped points to Roma or salvaged a point against Roma. This time it was very very decisive for both of these teams. Uh, Milan beating Lazio, Inter beating Roma which combined with a, a, the points dropped for Roma actually mean that Roma probably out of it. Also Atalanta losing to Juve has, it's a steep hill to climb for Atalanta. I also think it's a steep hill for Milan at this moment. I think they will need some help for sure. Um, their performance against Lazio was okay, although it was more Lazio that was horrid. Uh, but dropping points against against Cremonese again, saving a squad uh, for the big matches ahead. And this is the squad depth. That's the problem. It's also what hurts Roma a whole lot and Inter yeah, hitting the their stride. Inter really really look like a team that is for sure gonna finish ahead of Milan there. Uh, so I'm actually hoping more for Lazio to really drop and uh, Sarri's teams have this kind of uh, tick that they might tail off towards the end of the season. Uh, we also had some big results on the bottom of, of the table where Verona getting, after getting smashed by Inter get a huge away win at Lecce which means that they look a little bit safer where Spezia and um, Spezia lose to Cremonese. Cremonese getting four points this week but I think it's a little too little too late Sampdoria already are relegated uh, after a loss to Udinese. But when we're talking now top four battle, I think it is worth it to pull uh, up the standings from last week just to look at the chances to put it all in in, in perspective. And I, I'm focusing now on spots two to seven. We had Lazio pretty nailed on the 84 points. You went to 78 points Inter. 27 outside chance Milan 61 actually looking the favorites because of a rather soft schedule but I already warned you Milan have a trouble with teams that are defending deep Roma 33% Atalanta 16% this is how we went into the midweek where Atalanta had a whole lot of trouble beating a Spezia team uh, a Spezia team that is fighting for our survival took the lead through Giazzi but then Deron Sabacosta Muriel turned the game around for Burabia made it again a little bit more dicey at the same time, Juve, and we have to talk also, uh, we will talk about in the second game as well, a Juventus team that is not brilliant. However, the one thing that I have to give Allegri credit for is that he's actually playing the kids. He, they have six uh, players already played in the squad that were born after 2001. And so you were actually Juventus, meaning youth in Latin, are actually living up to their name, which I think is rather, rather remarkable. They're not a good team. However, they get the 2-1 win over Lecce, Lecce team that also, you know, kind of 
looking sort of safe, but also needing uh, the points to kind of get rid of all relegation trouble. Paredes score. Hmm, that's uh, an un unusual Miretti goal. One of the youth team players is Dieselane Vlaovic and gets the winner after uh, Kezai had equalized via penalty. I was hoping for points drop, but I'm not sure. Uh, we had a, a rather entertaining 3-3 between uh, Salentana and Fiorentina. Three times Salentana took the lead. Three times it was uh, Dia, who actually spoiled the party for Napoli last week and, uh, and uh, equalized by uh, Nico Gonzalez, Icone, and then uh, Biragi. This Fiorentina team is a little bit letting it loose in the league at the moment because they can win a title, which is the only way back in, in, into Europe, which means they either need to win the Coppa Italia against Inter, that's a tall order or the winter conference league which actually is a little bit more doable for them i even think they're currently the favorites to do so although you know you have to get past west ham have to get past past basel who can be a little bit you know cabral came from basel to fiorentina so there's a lot of things happening there um sampdoria edges closer to relegation with the two nil loss at home to fiorentina and then milan cremonese it's exactly the game that i expected and it could have worked so well if Salah makes a goal, he was really just with the upper arm offside. If that would have gone in, Milan would probably would have cruised to that win. They controlled this game, especially in the first half. I actually they played well without really scoring, but they had a uh, good control over Cremonese. However, with a very much rotated squad in the second half, uh, it did not get better, and it just doesn't work to bring on Leao and Giroud in the 62nd minute. They need to be pests the whole time. I actually think it would have been better to uh, have them play the first half and then take the or give them the full, full half. I know you're managing minutes. And then the two defenders fall, falling over to give Okareke uh, the chance to score the goal. It was really, there was the attack coming and I'm thinking, yeah, this is safe. There are two defenders there. And then both bump in, in, into each other. Okareke has, has, has a free shot. I'm thinking, oh man, are they now going to lose to Cremonese and bury all the hopes for top four? Honestly, lose or draw, it really does, does, does make much difference. Uh, Junior Messias gets with a, I think it was a free kick that I thought was deflected, but then it was not. Um, gets the 1-1 one, one in stoppage time, then a pick is sent off with a red card, but that was enough to kind of give uh, Cremonese enough rest. Milan have not only managed two points against Cremonese. Those are the things where Milan will hurt if it comes for top four, the 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 home uh, the home draw against Empoli, similar story. You need to get these points against the small opponents, and this is where if Milan fail to make a top four, this is where you have to look at. And I guess other teams they're actually performing rather well, and of course there was the blip in Jan in January, but I honestly think um, you could go overcome because you had a really good first half of the season overall. Lazio 2 0 over Sassolo, also a Sassolo team that is going nowhere. Uh, Immobile goal disallowed Felipe Anderson and then later on Basic uh, secure that win. Roma drop points to Monza despite going up 1 0 against uh, Jarava Calderola, who already scored the winner against Inter. Uh, equalizes. Monza had the chances to win this game. Uh, uh, even late, late on, Celic is sent off with, with, with a ye yellow red. and. Basically, yes, the draw against Milan um, kind of broke Roma as well. And, you know, they have already all these injuries. So it doesn't look good for them. It looks really good for Inter, though. Uh, Inter are hitting form at the right moment. Or from my perspective, at the wrong moment. But for them, totally at the right, right moment. Running over uh, Hellas 6-0 away from which Alan Nogli scoring a brilliant goal. Jaco adding one, uh, add into Lautaro adding two. Um, I think at the moment, if you're an Inter fan, you're looking rather, rather comfortable, um, especially going into the derby in the Champions League. Honestly, I, for me, it's really hard to see Milan winning that tie. Empoli beat a Bologna team that's also mid-table, and we talk about the, the you know, rather non-remarkable 1-1 between Udine and Napoli, which uh, secured the title for Napoli. But it is worth it. We saw the probabilities before. Now it has really changed that Lazio uh, looked rather safe. Juventus at 84 points. Uh, also fortifying their, their positions. Inter still a little bit uh, now the favorite among the chasing pack with 45 uh, up from 27. 
But then Milan had dropped from 61 to 35, so slashed the chance of a top four finish in half. Uh, Roma also uh, from 33 down to 24%, Atalanta uh, staying rather level. So this is the changes I wanted to say. Also on the bottom of the table, not much has changed because all the big players have um, actually lost in there. And so we go into the past weekend. Why is Milan playing in uh, green? That's why I'm wearing the green Milan jersey, jersey here at home. I think a third jersey should be worn away from home if there's no other option. Like if you play a red and white team, you can play uh, in this uh, olive green uh, disaster. Although I have to say there is a power part of me. We, we, we ate the name sets and this, lime gr uh, and this lime green accents. It might actually, not lime green, uh, like neon yellowish accents. It doesn't look all that bad. It's not my favorite Milan jersey ever. It's probably one of the worst ever. Milan look actually really good. The only thing is that Leao had to come off. He pulled his, his muscle and it's not quite clear. I mean, he said after what, don't worry about it. I am honestly worried about it. I'm really worried, <laughs> worried about it because without Leao and without Leao being fit, you have no chance against Inter. However, I mean, Sal Salamakers has the speed, but he's no Leao. That has to be said. However, the Milan really played well, created chances, um, intercepted Lazio. I mean, the way Lazio got intercepted, I think, by um, Benazir plays it to Giroud, back to Benazir, puts it in the internet. It's 1 0 in the 17th minute at a time where Milan probably should have taken already the lead. And then Mignon rolls it out to Hernandez, who again goes coast to coast. He won the Puskas with the one against Atalanta last, last season. He does it again. This one was a little bit less impressive because he didn't has he had to go past less players, but still it was a coast to coast goal. And from one edge of the box to the other edge of the box, it was a long range shot that took a slight deflection. But brilliant, 2 0. And at this point, with Lazio being so bad, the only thing I can think of, and again, I this is a chance missed. You had lost to Lazio 4 0. Head to head is the tiebreaker. Go for it. Go for it. Not take, not think so much about the derby, taking off your Giroud and Hernandez's uh, cares and, and so on. Yes, Malik Joy is really good. He made a nice v v v video with Sky uh, Germany. Uh, but I, and yes, you had to take Calabria off so, so that, that there is no suspensions coming, blah, blah, blah. I understand all that. But go for the jugular there. You had Lazio right there. No, the game petered out. It's 2 0. You lose the tiebreaker to Lazio. That Lazio is the only team. Despite now a four-point uh, difference, but I can see Milan catching Lazio. But if it comes down to a tiebreaker, you lose that one because of your bad form in January and because you didn't go there and because you're emphasizing too much on the Champions League. If Milan win the Champions League, I will eat my words. If they do not, this is mismanaged by Pioli. To, um, I have to say it as, as is. Because uh, winning a Champions League, that's a unicorn despite all the history behind it. However, it was right there for you to finish top four and you threw it away with uh, stupid squad rotations and, and so on. This is one thing that I will never get past in this season. Um, Roma actually didn't look all that bad against Inter. However, Inter is are the, are the better team and the way down, down first place is over to the market to make it 1-0. That moment, I did not see anything coming back. The Roma could have had all the corners, and yes, they're good at sad, sad pieces, but with a second string squad, and then uh, the Lautaro Lukaku um, Lula partnership again plays the pace dividends, and it is 1 0. I actually curious. Uh, Inzaghi has been saving Checo a whole lot. Uh, for the Euro Derby, but now Lukaku is going back to form. Those are decisions you have to make, and I hope, I really hope that he's overthinking it. Uh, it's all uh, it's all a daunting prospect. The front line is clicking suddenly, and to be honest, the back line is also looking rather rather solid. Although Milan's back line also looked solid, but I think it's the goals that uh, Inter can score that scare me the most. Um, and I'm not sure about the midfield either, but I think yeah. It's squeaky bum time, as Alex Ferguson said. Juve, again, uh, Atalanta had their chances. This was a very tightly contested match, but Juve dig deep, and it's Illing Jr., teenager, who gave them the lead. And then Allegri, very pragmatic, get the job done for Juventus. 
Uh, in the end, Vlahovic scores uh, the winner. He has been racially abused um, all ever since he came on. Uh, silences the crowd, and like Lukaku, he gets the yellow card. Aren't we over that in it 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 Italy? This is what bugs me there. But a uh, huge credit to Juve because I thought that Atalanta, and I would have loved if uh, if both teams drop points. Juve being up there, um, they have recovered. They had a really, really bad run for a while, but now suddenly Juve get two wins and maybe looking rather set on for this top four finish. Um, few non-relevant results. I mean, Napoli get the 1-0 over Fiorentina uh, to celebrate. Uh, we talked about it before. The huge one was, of course, then uh, uh, Verona winning 1-0 at Lecce. That was huge, and that combined that with Cremonese beating Spezia, all beautiful news for Verona, who probably secured survival. However, on the other end, Empoli beating Salantana, but Salantana is kind of safe. Udine beating Sam Sampdoria, sending Sampdoria down. Uh, that was yesterday in the early evening, and then Sassuolo 1 1 against Bologna. It's a derby, but it has no bearing on the league itself. And so Again, let's look at the standings. Uh, it's a little bit cleared up. Atalanta and Roma are more or less out of the relegation. Uh, oh, relegation. Top four battle. Uh, Juve now look nailed on. Lazio still kind of safeish, but it's Inter now with a solid, solid 70% over Milan's 44. And as I said, I'm looking. If you, if I just look at um, you know the win draw losses, Inter have lost 11 games. However, they also won 20. They barely draw. Whereas Milan draw too many games. And a few of these draws have been against smaller opponents. I already said it. Should, should have been wins. Milan could be in a much, much stronger position. Milan more or less need to win out and need help. And it's on paper rel relatively easy except for a uh, away game to Juventus. Where I actually would also favor them. Although Pragmatic Allegri will probably put a wrench in there. I think Milan will finish fifth, and the only way they play Champions League uh, next season is they, if they win the darn thing. They're not gonna win that darn thing. Also on the bottom, it's also very cleared up. Lecce and Ellas have very small chances of getting relegated. Spezia, Cremonese, uh, and Sampdoria will probably go down uh, there. What's interesting in the expected standings, it has no bearing on anything of meaning, but this very broad midfield from Fiorentina to Sassuolo, with Fiorentina on the upper edge and Sassuolo on, on the lower, but it's very wishy-washy that, uh, you know, these positions will change a whole lot. The rest is very much nailed on, it has to be said. Next two rounds. Normally, I would be happy to say Mina is going to Spezia, a Spezia team where Maldini surely is going to score again. Uh, <laughs> Paolo needs to call his son and say, please roll over. They're not going to do that. Uh, I think Spezia will give, give the fight, will stay deep, and it will be hard. Lazio, Lecce will be a win. Salantana, At Atalanta, that doesn't remember, but Inter Sassuolo. Sassuolo is not going to um, show up at the San Siro. Not against an Inter team this form. A lot will depend on how the Derby. You know, both of these games are very much uh, conditioned by the second leg and what's ha happening between those two. Uh, I think Bologna Roma is always an interesting game, and you will get wins over Cremonese. And then the week after, Milan has to play relegated Sampdoria. Inter have, have to go to Napoli. Potentially, the trophy lift will happen there, although it will happen at the last day of the season. That Napoli team has nothing to play for, so probably Inter will win that one. I really hope they make the trophy ceremony there. Because that will motivate Napoli a little bit. Other than that, there is no chance, honestly, there. Um, so, yeah, and Juve Empoli. Nope. I've resigned myself. Milan is going to finish fifth. Well, the Europa League is one of the trophies Milan have not won yet. But they have a really hard time winning that one. Because sometimes there were uh, chances to do so. Any case, please let me know your thoughts on the top four race in Italy. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!